You're listening to Power Talk, Berkeley Electric Cooperative's official broadcast about the cooperative, our communities, and ways to use energy wisely. And now, let's join our hosts for today's episode. Good morning, good morning, good morning, and welcome to another edition of Power Talk. I am Micah Ponce, the Communications and Media Specialist. I'm going to be one of your hosts today here at Berkeley Electric Cooperative. And as always, I am joined by Miss Libby Rowig, the Director of Marketing and Communications. Welcome, Libby. Thank you, Micah. It's always a great morning when we're doing Power Talk. Exactly. And for those of you who are watching on YouTube, you might see that we have a full house today, which is Always exciting. We've got two special guests in here. We've got Mr. Ryan Huxford, an apprentice lineman in Monk's Corner. Welcome, sir. Thank you. And then we also are joined by Mr. Patrick Gailey, the Director of Safety and Technical Training. Hello, sir. Hey, how are y'all? Doing good. <laughs> well, what we're going to be doing today, we're just going to be talking to these guys and find out a little bit more about them. Ryan, um, I believe you're a fairly recent addition to the co-op family, and you came aboard as a full-time um, employee this spring. Is that right? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, and how did you sort of find your way to Berkeley Electric? Was it through, like, the, or I believe it was like uh, you were an electrical line worker intern? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What did you, uh, tell us a little bit about that. I mean, what's... What do you do for fun? You know, tell us a little about yourself. Let's let's get to know the Ryan behind the <laughs> microphone. Well, my name is Ryan Huxford. I'm right here from Monk's Corner. Been here my whole life. Live in Monk's Corner. Graduated from Berkeley High School. Okay, go Stags. In 2021. <laughs> um, usually on my off time, I like to you know hang out with friends and family. My girlfriend, ride four wheelers, go on the boat, fish and hunt, or just mess around. You know, little ends and odds, stuff like that. Well, I mean, hey, typical Berkeley County. We like it. I got four wheelers myself. I got a boat. It sits in the boat backyard mostly, though, unfortunately. It's more like a yard ornament. Um, yeah, sure. I got to make a decision about that one of these days. Um, but, uh, <laughs> you know, how did you first get interested in line work? What sort of brought you to this field? Really, what got me interested is um, my granddad, he worked on the line crew for years and years. And just hearing stories from him telling stories, you know, and having a handful of buddies that do line work really made me interested, you know, hearing them tell stories about how they work on stuff and work in these type of places and stuff mm-hmm. like that. So I just really want to give it a try. Where did your grandfather work? He worked at Santa Cuba. Okay, cool. Yes, ma'am. So he was a lineman as well? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Yes, Santa Cooper is one of our great partners. Yeah. Along with, uh, you know, the other co-ops, but they're our power supplier. They're the mm-hmm. ones who make sure that we have the energy that our members need. So yeah. Yeah, always great fun. partners. So how did you get to Berkeley Electric and the Trident Tech program? I always heard it was a good place to work, you know. Um, like I said, I got a handful of buddies that work here, mm-hmm. and I was signed up in the Trident program regardless if I didn't get the scholarship or if I did. Mm-hmm. Gratefully, I did get the scholarship, but just every, everybody I talked to said it was a great place to work, mm-hmm. so I just wanted to give it a try. And, I mean, it's, it's the best place I ever worked. <laughs> It I really agree. Yeah. yeah, we like it too. <laughs> kind of good. Well, we don't want to forget about our other guy. You know, we got Patrick sitting here, and you might have been with the co-op just a little bit longer than Ryan, I guess. Yeah, just a little bit. Um, I've been here right at 12 years now. <laughs> I'm sure it's just like yesterday. Yeah, it does, honestly. <laughs> You're a spring chicken. Uh, I won't tell you how long I've been here, but it's a little bit more than 12 years. Yeah, so. 12 years flies by. Yeah, it, does. it definitely yeah. does. Yeah. Um, and you've, you've worked your way all the way up from the ranks, I understand. You're now in charge of training our line workers and keeping them safe but i mean you know some of the same questions how did you end up at the co-op you know what what brought you here 12 years ago yeah so much like ryan um i went through the apprenticeship program that we have at trident tech and obviously we wasn't offering the scholarship then it was kind of new new program that berkeley electric was offering um backing up before i actually signed up for the apprentice program that Trident Tech was offering, I uh, was, it's kind of a weird time. So around the 2008 to 2012 mm-hmm. era, there wasn't many jobs out there. So yeah. every job I worked, it kind of seemed like it was lining up for a layoff in Berkeley Electric, Santee Cooper, Home Telephone, some of the major utilities. These places actually didn't lay off, mm-hmm. which was a big deal mm-hmm. at that time. So now the dynamics have kind of changed. You kind of have all these other places that you know, actively hiring people, begging for people to come in, whereas in my time you were begging to get in the door with an employer. So yeah. it's yeah. it's definitely changed a lot, the dynamics in the last 12 years from where we were then and now. 
And Patrick, you're a hometown boy too, Timberland grad. Yep, Timberland grad. Um, <laughs> went to Berkeley for a semester. Went to St. John's. Couldn't for a hack semester. it. Couldn't, <laughs> couldn't hack it at a big hack, school. And had to go. <laughs> <laughs> no, the gas. Um, I live in Jamestown, so the gas money got a little too hot. <laughs> Well, I mean, you know, you were you were saying, you know, that weird little time, 2008, there was actually a little bit of a weird time, too, because around that time, Berkeley Electric was not part of our statewide organization. And that had a little bit to do with how we started the electrical line worker program. Isn't that correct? Yep, that's right. Um, so traditionally, all cooperatives partner with statewide for mm-hmm. all their apprentice training. When it comes, you know, coming through the lineman ranks, you start with overhead one, two, three and so on and so forth. You take those classes as you progress. And whenever we pulled out of statewide, that was something that we had to get right on. It's something that we had to do and start offering it in-house. That's actually where our technical trainer position came from was the need to make sure we had somebody to train mm-hmm. our linemen. Um, doing that in-house at the time really wasn't feasible. And we also wanted to have more of a curriculum to back it up. So we partnered with Trident Tech Mm -hmm. and that's where we actually run our courses for all of our line workers through Mm -hmm. the summer semester. And then on the flip side for Trident Tech, we sponsor all their poles, tools, materials, equipment, stuff like that for the fall and spring semesters. So it's definitely a partnership that benefits the cooperative, but it also benefits the area because we're not the only ones hiring line workers. You know, we've got St. T. Cooper, you mentioned them, um, Sumter, you know, other other folks uh, need line workers as well. Yeah, so um, uh, line workers right now is definitely a very high demand job, uh, not just in South Carolina, not mm-hmm. just in Berkeley County, but all, all over the country. You can pretty much pick where you want to work. Um, a lot of these safety sensitive jobs are like that, and line work being one of the most dangerous jobs and one of the most rigorous apprenticeships, the lack of people coming into the field has definitely played a role in having a lack of available applicants to put Mm -hmm. in for these jobs and where most of the co-ops, you know, around the state, not everybody is struggling, but most people have the same exact problems. We have the differences. We have programs like Trident Tech where we can go out and recruit guys like Ryan and other apprentices. And we actually get to see how they work before we even bring them on. Yeah. Where a lot of people, and you know, it's, it's not just really how people work. Some people don't like heights. Yeah. And it, it just is what it is. And Myself included. Yeah. If, <laughs> if you hire somebody that really wants to work outside, they really like everything about line work and yeah. think they can do it. And then they get six foot up on a pole and realize, hey, this isn't for me. Yeah. You have that really to worry about. Whereas with class, whenever you're hiring out of that class, you know, they can climb, they can do pole top rescue, they can do bucket rescue. They can lift a cross arm. They mm-hmm. know how to work a hand line, extendo stick, all the basics. And they have a little bit of electrical theory, you know, to kind of boots, kickstart that next level of training that we do at Trident Tech. Yeah. And, you know, even if somebody goes through the ELW program and decides, you know, line work's not necessarily for me, that, that still opens a lot of doors to careers within the utility business. Can you tell us a little more about that? Yeah, so we've hired um, people in our staking department, people in our substation department. Uh, I hear about people going all over the state at different mm-hmm. cooperatives. There's a lot more jobs than just line work at the cooperative now, where traditionally, you know, 50 years ago, line workers would do everything inside. You know, once the line started, mm-hmm. they covered everything from the yeah. substation out. Um, they would go and do their own staking. Your older linemen would go and stake the jobs. The younger linemen would come back and do it. Now we have all these different positions. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we actually have staking technicians. We actually have substation technicians. We have GIS technicians for mapping. Mm-hmm. And having that background of what a cross arm is, what a fuse jack is, yeah. all of that you get from the class as well. So if you have that knowledge, it makes you kind of an instant shoe in to apply for these roles as well. Yeah. And don't you end up with like certain certifications once you're done as well? And, and like maybe even, I think even like an associate's degree or something along those lines. Yeah. So, um, the program at Trident Tech, if you take the fall or spring semester, you get what's called a third class certificate. So that's what Ron just graduated with out of his class. You get that third class certificate pretty much saying I'm ready to start my career in the utility. Um, as we continue to go through, so as Ryan progresses over the next four years, he'll take overhead two, three, four, so on and so forth. And those are actually college college accredited courses through Berkeley that he'll take free of charge. Mm-hmm. And whenever he gets done, he'll have what's called an advanced certificate. So I think it's right at 36 college credits he'll have 
as long as he stays with us and finishes his apprenticeship, which I know he's going to do. Yes. Um, <laughs> so after that, if he wanted to, he can turn that right into an associate's degree, taking yeah. your basic, you know, just your core classes of English, math, psychology, and history. It'll end up being right at 71 credits mm -hmm. that you take, and that'll actually turn into an associate's in science through Trident Tech. Yeah. Mm. What just what a great career opportunity to for someone who has a high school diploma or the equivalent um, can come aboard the TTC program and or our internship program and get the training for free and start a career and continue to get trained and work your way up and um, you know just have wonderful benefits and yeah so if you are leaving out of high school and you're unsure what you want to do but you love working outside. It, I would definitely think that this is something you'd want to look into. Um, instead of starting your freshman year in college, you'll actually be in college, yeah. but you'll also be an active employee here, yeah. being able to work, make income, have benefits. All right, Ryan, you got to give us a skinny. What was the hardest part of the course that you've taken so far? You've been out there on the working at the training facility. What, what's What's been the one thing that's really just given you fits when you were out there? <laughs> I mean, really – Really nothing, really good. I mean, oh, Superman over here. Yeah, good answer. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I like saying that. Yeah. <laughs> well, nothing, sir. <laughs> okay, well, next question. No, no, seriously. I mean, what? I mean, you know, what's? I guess if nothing's giving you trouble, what's been your favorite part then? Man, my favorite part just climbing. I, I love to climb now. You know, Mr. Louis, the teacher down there at Triton Tech, he tell you what to do. You know, mm -hmm. I didn't have a problem doing it as long as he showed me how to do. It, if I wasn't sure how to do it, and that's one thing he didn't have a problem with. You know, he'd show you how to do whatever you didn't know how to do. Right. But that was probably one of the funnest things to me was climbing. <laughs> well, I've been down there and watched a little bit of it, and I can tell you right off, when they were in the classroom and they had Ohm's Law up on the board and everything else like that. Was that was probably the hardest I thing. I was about to me. say, I was about to say, I was like, mm, <laughs> That was yeah, probably the hardest. I probably wouldn't be able to pass this part. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I'm on radio, folks, because I can't, <laughs> I can't add. So, <laughs> yes, <sir. laughs> Patrick, what is, what's kind of the going rate for a journeyman lineman? So you go through all the training for how many years would it take you to get to become yes, a journeyman? Yes, so with us, you can get to journeyman in four years. Oh, wow. But we actually broke our journeyman up into a journeyman one and a journeyman two. Okay. The biggest difference between those two is a journeyman one cannot supervise employees, whereas a journeyman two can. Ah. And, you know, just because we give you all the training, mm -hmm. all the tools you need, doesn't necessarily mean that you're ready to lead another sure. group of people. Yeah. So if your foreman's out that day, it doesn't mean that you're ready to take over that whole crew. Yeah. So that's where we kind of put that separation piece in there. Yeah. And obviously to get to journeyman two, it's, it's a lot more responsibility. Yeah. And because of it, you, you get more pay. Um, but we have it to where it's a one to two year. Mm -hmm. kind of depends on the employee, sure. where they're at, how well that they're you know, acclimating into the crew and the yeah. the supervision role. You know, it, it takes a lot if you see one of your coworkers not doing something right yeah. to stop them. Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of a pride thing sometimes. It's yeah. it's a lot of different things that can go into it. But that's yeah. where we put that that one to two year buffer in there. Some people it comes more natural. Some people it needs another year. Mm -hmm. um, but once you get topped out to journeyman two, it's it's very easy to get to $100,000 whenever you start talking journeyman two level, especially with the overtime that these guys work. Wow. It's not always mandatory overtime, but yeah. usually with storms, oh, yeah. pop-up things in the afternoons, you're going to end up working overtime yeah. and getting that a lot of – a lot of extra money. Right. And this time of year, we actually end up sending a lot of crews to help other cooperatives when um, we've got issues that, that yeah, prop just up. Yeah, recently sent a group of guys to help out with some storm recovery. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And, mm -hmm. you know, once they leave, they're making overtime from the time they leave yeah. to the time they get back. So. so I graduated high school and went to college and... Um, just paid off my student loans. <laughs> nice. <laughs> but, you know, Ryan's sitting here pretty with no student loans and, you know, a, a rewarding career ahead of him. Yeah. That, so I've actually got some student loans myself um, <laughs> that came from before I started Berkeley when yeah. I was going for civil engineering before I came. And like I said, you know, working these other jobs before, trying to go to school at night to be a civil engineer, have mm -hmm. my little boy at the house. Every day, somebody was getting laid off, yeah. the, mm -hmm. the, just the way it was. Yeah. And since coming to Berkeley, I mean, it's just been a total change of, you know, it's been fast-paced. It's been a lot of learning. Yeah. But 
it's it's definitely reassuring to go home at night and not worry. You know, I don't know if I'm going to have work tomorrow. Yeah. Right. I don't know what the economy is going to do. I don't. So it's definitely been a, a a nice nice feeling to be able to come here and just know the hardest thing is, dang, I didn't didn't do exactly what I was supposed to do today. Maybe I need to do better tomorrow. Yeah, didn't answer all those yeah. emails. Yeah, the work's definitely there, though. <laughs> yeah, uh, electric- the need for electricity is not going away, folks. No. Yeah. No. Um, no. It, it's going to be here for a while. Well, if you're just joining us, we are talking with Mr. Patrick Gailey and Mr. Ryan Huxford about our electrical line worker program here at Berkeley Electric Cooperative. Um, the internship scholarship part of it, you know, it's, it's a fairly recent new opportunity that we've offered here at Berkeley Electric. Well, how many times a year do we take applications for the internship? We'll do it twice a year. And we're, we actually started with one scholarship per semester. Now we've moved up to two. Mm-hmm. As long as we can do it, we'll either keep trying to move that number up or at least maintain them where we're at. We really try to reach out to different schools, different areas. You know, we, we have a vast territory. Mm-hmm. So sometimes it's harder to get people in our Ondal and Johns Island districts yeah. to want to apply for the scholarship. Right. Um, not necessarily to apply for the scholarship, but to come to work there, to live mm-hmm. within 20 miles of that district office. That can be tough in some of those areas to, to find some affordable Places yeah, to live. For sure. Yeah. Everybody loves moving to the low country. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Driving those housing prices right up. I mean, well, what about, I mean, the internship? I mean, well, Ryan, you've done the internship, right? You yes, know, sir. What, sort of, what was sort of your experience? I mean, what was some of the things that you sort of stuck out to you as you did the internship? Part I mean, of it? The, the internship, you know, you learn a lot in school too, but you actually get to come here on Fridays, every Friday. And if you don't have school, during the weekend, the co-op's working. Mm. You could work with them, you know, every day. Well, you know, you learn a lot in the school, but on Fridays you get to see actually how it's done, you know, hands-on, right. energized work. Mm-hmm. Um, I was very grateful to get the internship. Like I said, I was still going to the school yeah, regardless. regardless. Yeah. Yeah. But luckily I got that, and you just you really – get to see you know how to do the work the safe way when it's really energized mm-hmm. instead of just working on something that's dead you know um it's a it's a great opportunity to do it if you can get the chance to do it were you assigned to the monks horner district when yes ma'am the internship yep so is, is, that, is that what they typically end up doing like the crew that they're assigned to during their internship that's where they sort of end up working when they join us full time or it's just wherever we have an opening at the time yeah, not necessarily um whatever district office they're closest to mm-hmm. we'll put them with that district office but what we'll try to do is obviously within the first half of the semester that foreman that they're reporting to is going to be starting to talk to the other mm-hmm. foreman whether that's in a good way or a bad way or you know he's going to say hey this person you know they're doing very well you have a working interview every Friday whenever you come into work with us yeah. versus just having that one hour where we bring you up right. in a room and kind of mm-hmm. talk to you. So whenever they're getting around to having an opening on a different crew, maybe than where that scholarship recipient's at, what we'll typically try to do is move them to that crew if it's possible. Mm-hmm. So with Ron, he was working in Mulch Corner. He ended up getting a job with the system log crew. Right now they're on 410, so they're off on Fridays, which is when Ron's coming in. But the ah. district foreman was definitely talking to that system wide foreman, like, hey, you got to check Ryan out. He's doing really <laughs> well with us. I know you got an opening coming up. You really need to get down to the school and watch him a little bit there. And whenever, like, whenever you have that communication between your crew leaders, yeah, that's one of the most positive things really about the scholarship is people are talking about you and seeing how you work. Yeah. We already know you can interview well because interviewing well is what got you the scholarship. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Sure. Yeah. But, you know, Ryan brought up a great point that even if he didn't get the internship, he was going to go through the TTC program because of its reputation and and the opportunities it presented. And we've hired non-interns from the TTC program. We had like a record high recently, like five or six folks we brought on from the program. Yep, for sure. So we actually give scholarships, had two scholarships running that semester and just had a big need for line workers in a couple of our district offices. So we asked a class who would be willing to come here. We had, I think, four people sign up. We ended up hiring three of those people that signed okay. up for the internship in those districts. Wow. So, it, like I said, it you don't necessarily have to get the scholarship to get a job with us, and I, I definitely don't want people to think that. Yeah. A lot of times, having that scholarship may be the reason you don't get the job, mm. you know, depending on how you work on Fridays. But we definitely come out, look at the whole class, um, not only us, but Santee Cooper, Dominion. Yeah. 
Gregory, Sumter Utilities, all Pinnacle, Boring actually comes out. Okay. They say, hey, if you don't like climbing too much, but you <laughs> seem like you work really well, come, come and work with us. Yeah. So yeah. There, there's definitely a lot of opportunity to get hired out of these classes. I've never heard of anybody that took the class and afterwards said, hey, I passed a class I did really well, and I just can't find a job with anybody. Right. Maybe not the exact spot you wanted to get to because yeah. they didn't have it opening or had a more qualified candidate, but you definitely have opportunities to go to work somewhere after this class. Definitely. Yeah, I was going to mention, I thought that you, just like you said, there's a showcase that's associated with each one of the the Trident Tech programs. Mm-hmm. So when they go through the electrical line worker program, there's a showcase at the end where, like you said, all the all the um, utilities, utilities yeah. can come out and look at you. And then, hey, you can even have friends and family come out and sort of cheer you on and, and have <laughs> your own personal cheering crew. Yeah, Ron yeah. had a big old cheerleading squad out there. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was a Superman, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Half a most corner was there. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, Ryan, you've gone through the program. And, I mean, if anybody else is considering it, what would what would be, in your opinion, some things that they need to think about before they, you know, embark on this career you know what are some of the things that personally from you that you, what's the advice that you would give somebody who's getting ready to graduate from berkeley high school and consider the program <laughs> i think the biggest thing they need to look out is heights and heat uh, you know if they don't like the heat or heights i, I don't know you know i don't think they like it but yeah <laughs> I, I think that's really the two big things that they need to look out for right and and you gotta know think how to about do two plus two yeah, that yeah. Ohm's law that'll that'll trip you. <laughs> yeah, so oh, yeah, you, sure. Got to know how to add a little bit. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. So you know, Ryan Patrick was talking a lot about how, particularly with our interns, it, it's a fourteen week p- interview period. But you know, the interns are interviewing us as much as we're interviewing them and getting to know us as much as we're getting to know you. What made you want to come aboard Berkeley Electric full time to make that jump from intern to full time employee? Really what made me want to come full-time is, you know, so this place is full of hard workers, mm-hmm. and everybody treats you like family. Mm-hmm. You know, like my first Friday working here, I didn't know nobody, really. Mm-hmm. You know, I know a couple people. Yeah. But, you know, nobody's got a problem of showing you how to do something. Because mm-hmm. when you come into this line of work, you don't know nothing, you know, about yeah. line work. Yeah. But nobody here has a problem showing you how to do it. Patrick's team, I mean, they do a, a dang good job <laughs> of training you know, in the school and oh, yes. at the office. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's that's really what made me want to come here. You know, it's just a really great place to work. Yeah. I'll give you that 20 bucks for saying that. After <laughs> <laughs> well, and I'm, I'm probably going to embarrass Patrick, but I know every time I talk to Patrick, I learn something. And that's probably more a reflection of how little I know. But, <laughs> <laughs> but well, uh, hopefully you're learning good stuff. and right. Yes, stuff. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Well, you know, we're, we're talking about linemen and line workers, and obviously line workers are probably going to be some of the most visible and recognizable employees, you know, at the cooperative, out in the community a lot. You're not going to see – folks aren't going to necessarily know who I am if I'm out there in the field, but they'll you – know, They'll know your voice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, those the, – you, you guys are the front line of, of the cooperative, and, you know, hey, anytime we post you all on social media, we got lots of clicks, lots of likes, you yeah. know. So we can't wait to see what you what kind of numbers you pull, Ryan. We'll, we'll see. <laughs> we'll, we'll put you head to head with Patrick and see yeah. who gets the, who gets the, gets the most likes. You'd win it. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, you know, it's it, we're talking, we're talking, and we're having fun. But line work really is is dangerous, and it's a high stakes job that requires years of training and on the job experience, like you mentioned, to become a journeyman. You know, it, it is literally a journey to become a lineman. You got to go through all these stages to to get the skills and and the safety training that you need. Um, you know. Just overall, sort of, uh, we've touched on it a little bit, but I mean, sort of, what's the process? I mean, when you when you first come in, say that you don't even go through the the line worker program, what's what's like the the foot in the door when you want to become a lineman and starting that process? So, really, the foot in the door to me is going to be taking that class uh, at Trident Tech. You don't have to take the class at Trident Tech. Obviously, there's a lot of different lineman training, mm-hmm. apprentice training. Got Northwestern Lineman College. You got you know, just different schools all over the state. They're popping up all but over different ours states. Ours is best. Ours is definitely the best, though. <laughs> um, you know, we've actually had people come from seven or eight states, half the country away, mm-hmm. to come take the Trident Tech program because of our cost and how we work it. And we ended up hiring both of those guys. Awesome. Um, so, you know, you really need to think about, though, is that something you really want? You know, do you, re- you want to work outside? 
do you enjoy are you able to work outside yeah. you know is the heat or the extreme cold going to bother you it's, it's not always sunny in 75 a mm-hmm. lot of times it's like it is today it's sunny in 91 yeah you know are you going to be okay with your shirt being soaking wet yeah yeah and there's a lot of people that really relish working outside but mm-hmm. haven't thought about lime work and yeah. vice versa a lot of people that have thought about lime work but haven't thought about everything that goes with it they see mm-hmm. the cool stickers on the back of the trucks but the you know lineman on the pole and they're mm-hmm. like oh yeah i'm gonna do that one day and then it's like well i mean i really really like to sweat but, uh, <laughs> well, that kind of goes with it so you know it, it's definitely a lot to think about but we can go both ways with it you there's a lot of people that don't understand lime work that i think would be a really good fit and there are mm-hmm. some people who think they understand it maybe they don't understand it as well as they thought yeah well i mean in, in, you know you're the director of safety and training but i mean in terms of safety, what are what are some of your more common things that you're going to run into as a lineman that might present a danger to when you're out there working in the field? I mean, whew, and a hazard assessment and um, line work is you'll have a book. It won't be a page. Right. Um, yeah. Everything from the trucks you're driving to what you're lifting. Mm-hmm. You you have you have many hazards before you ever get to the electricity aspect. Mm-hmm. I know a lot of people think you know well you know electricity electrocution. Those are definitely what takes out a lot of linemen. And, you know, looking back at the history, of course, that electrocution is a big deal. It's something that, you know, our apprentices and our journeymen and law foreman, everybody else has to worry about. But it's whenever you start look, overlooking the other hazards before you get to the electricity yeah. that usually gets to them. We, we do a pretty good job, I think. And I was trained in, you know, every aspect of what to do with electricity. And then you may overlook the swinging a transformer with the lawn truck over somebody's head. So yeah. that's where we, we try to really narrow down each little aspect of mm-hmm. the job so we can all see the hazards and all of it. And I mean, you know, safety, I mean, it's one of those things that you just, like you said, you can't take for granted. Um, it's, it's when you're on the job, it's a 24 seven thing. I mean, it's an every minute thing because a simple mistake, I mean, you can jump off the back of a trailer and, and twist your ankle and be out of work for yeah. a couple of days. Or like you said, if you're not, not, not paying attention where you're swinging that boom, you can give somebody a, a nice knock on the noggin or something like that yeah. when you're swinging the transformer. So, I mean, it can just be something simple. Well, and, and the heat can't be underscored enough. You oh, know, no, we definitely not. all recently had um, some safety training where um, Patrick, your team, was talking about the importance of pre-gaming, you know, that hydration starts the day before and you have to make sure you're fueling your body in a, in a, a way that will help keep you safe and um, healthy. Yeah, and that's something that Ron's going to see more and more as he's going through his apprenticeship and yeah. getting the opportunity to put gloves and sleeves on and start yeah. getting exposed to working in the bucket is that it doesn't really matter how much water he drinks that morning. Yep. It's going to matter what he did the night before. What did he eat the night before? All yep. those things play a factor. You know, what what fuel did you put in you mm-hmm. to get you through the next day? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, have Ryan, come back to you here as we're sort of getting close down to the end of the show. I mean, you know, you've been working on the job a little bit now. Has there been any, any interesting situations, run into any sort of like strange animals or anything else snakes. like that? Snakes, uh, spiders. and. <laughs> I mean, I... I don't think we've seen no strange animals. In that. <laughs> not yet. Not not yet. Except for the bears. except for the other except for the other crew guys. Yeah. <laughs> no, I ain't stra- I ain't seen nothing strange yet. You know, I'm sure I'll see something mm-hmm. one day. But I'm gonna put yet. put you on the spot. Who's your favorite crew leader? Billy Bunch. <laughs> <laughs> That's the right that answer. That's the right answer. answer. Yeah. Anybody, anybody who's listening, that was the right answer. <laughs> your favorite communications guy. What? <laughs> If you don't say Micah, you're in trouble. <laughs> the only communications yeah. guy. <laughs> yeah. I win. He, yeah. he, he serves with a team of women. So. <laughs> and I love it. Every day. That's also the right answer. <laughs> yeah. House full of sisters. I'm with you. <laughs> Bossy ones. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, folks, if you're interested in learning a little bit more about our electrical line worker internship, obviously just go to berkeleyelectric.coop. Um, and if you're learning about, you know, one, you want to sign up for that NetX next application period. Let me see if I can talk here. Um, <laughs> you can also sign up for job alerts on our careers page at also at berkeleyelectric.coop. But you know, we want to thank you for tuning in to Power Talk. This is the official broadcast of your local electric cooperative. And you can catch up with past episodes on streaming platforms like Spotify, Apple, and iHeartRadio. And don't forget, you can get a behind-the-scenes look at each episode on the Co-op's YouTube channel. So until next time, this is Berkeley Electric's Power Talk signing off.